A young XLR8 battles Eon for the first time outside of Mr. Smoothie at the start of the episode. Five years later, outside of the same Mr. Smoothie, Eon engages in combat with Diamond Head. Nowadays, Ben observes that Eon isn't battling as much as he typically does. Eon shows his real colors and takes their omnitrix in both time periods as he and young Ben time out. This causes an explosion that sends both Bens to the ground. Team Ben doesn't realize he's in young Ben's body when he wakes up, believing his omnitrix has changed to resemble his old one. To his amazement, Ben turns into Ditto. He then duplicates and dogpiles Eon, but he vanishes fast. Arriving while the Dittos are celebrating are Gwen and Max. Ben realizes he's a child when he turns around after experiencing another shock at seeing them. Gwen notes that Ben's voice sounds different. Ben tries to explain to them that he is worried about the fate of his younger self and that he is from the future. Meanwhile, we see young Ben, ecstatic to be in Team Ben's body in the present. As Rook and Max get to him, they are also curious as to why his speech sounds different. Abruptly, Eon emerges, enthralled with the temporal consciousness inversion he had inadvertently brought about. Ben is perplexed, yet he demands to see Professor Paradox. Eon recalls that the professor would go find Team Ben instead of him, and that young Ben hasn't met him yet. He vanishes. In the past, Paradox shows up and presents himself to Max and Gwen as Ben begins to respond to Gwen's inquiries about the future, to which Max disagrees. Ben is ecstatic about the prospect of a time war when Paradox complains that he has been engaged in open combat on the space-time continuum and points out his new steampunk-inspired outfit and prosthetic arm. Ben knows in private that Paradox has kept Eon stuck in this reality, where he can freely go to the past or future but cannot access alternate realities, since Eon wants nothing less than complete control over everything. Moreover, the disguised Chroma Navigator, Paradox's pocket watch, holds the key to Eon's escape. Out of nowhere, Eon battles Paradox, overwhelming him and severing his prosthetic limb in the process. Eon teleports the two of them away, because Paradox won't give up the Chrono Navigator. Paradox yells to Ben that everything is well in hand before he departs. All that's left for Ben is the Professor's severed arm. Young Ben is acting naftily at Plumber Headquarters right now, and Rook is wondering if anyone has dealt with this younger Ben before. Gwen emerges in the doorway as if on cue. She tells him that five years prior, Ben had made an unusual promise that she would see him precisely five years later and accompany him to see Mr. Smoothie. The gang rightly surmises that young Ben is suffering from a cross-time brain swap because he claims he never promised her anything. At the end of time, Eon is holding Paradox captive so that he might be questioned. Eon is perplexed but believes Paradox when he claims not to have the Cronon Navigator. When Ben and Gwen were inside the Rust Bucket 2 in the past, Ben examined the arm in an attempt to figure out Paradox's suggestion. His maturity and kindness are what turn Gwen off when she compares him to his younger self. Ben then forces Gwen to make a similar pledge, which she will eventually have to keep. After that, Ben leaves with the Corona Navigator. Now back in the present, Rook drives the Proto Truck while Gwen does, in fact, take Ben to Mr. Smoothie. Ben finds his favorite Sumo Slammer sticker embedded in a street lamp space when they get there. Ian keeps questioning in the interim. He understands that the Chrono Navigator must be in Paradox's arm and intends to travel back in time to the instant he severed his arm. But Paradox cautions him that traveling there could trigger a rupture because space-time is already dangerously thin at that point. Though irritated, Eon smiles at a different thought that occurs to him. He disappears by teleport, leaving Paradox restrained. Rook observes additional markings on the lamp's top in the present. To get there, Ben changes into Diamond Head and mounts a crystal pillar. Two coordinates and the name Armadrillo are inscribed at the top. Ben is perplexed by both Armadrillo and the coordinates when Rook identifies them as being a part of the abandoned sewer system that passes under Undertown and beneath Bellwood. They enter the tea store owned by Pacmar by following the coordinates. Ben is trying to get past Pacmar, but Rook convinces him to let them into the basement. After changing into Armadrillo, Ben drills beneath the surface until he runs into a pipe, thereby flooding the store and adding to Parkmar's already dire situation. The group keeps driving, finding more clues that only Ben can access, Goop to check in a tap, NRG to enter a nuclear reactor, and Wildmut to dig underground. Thanks to the hit pipe's engraved coordinates, they are eventually guided all the way back to Mr. Smoothie. 
Ben commends them for not looking for a treasure at the beginning of a treasure map, to which Rook and Gwen wonder why they would spend so much time looking for clues only to return to where they began. Something is found inside the Mr. Smoothie building by Rook's scanner. Ben tries to change back into Armadrillo, but Big Chill appears instead. He makes his way through the structure till he discovers Paradox's arm inside the wall. They're about to question what it is when Eon enters through a gateway and takes it. Equipped with the multiverse's key, Eon may now view any timeline and reality at his disposal. Young Ben turns into Arctiguana and freezes Eon, who calls forth waves of his attendants using the Crone Navigator. They observe that the portals in time that summon them aren't closing as usual as Gwen, Rook, and Arctiguana dispose of them. They begin to spin around Eon, causing a temporal fissure that allows them to see young Gwen and teen Ben from before. The Gwens are startled to meet one another, but Paradox suddenly becomes unstable and warns them not to cross. Eon is furious at these results and charges Paradox with deceiving him, but Paradox responds that he forewarned him and urged him to quit before the end of the world. Feeling disturbed, Eon swings the arm more carelessly and threatens to destroy the universe if he is unable to dominate it. While Gwen teaches her younger self a spell that they hurl into Paradox's rift and free him of his bonds, Arctiguana and Ben, as Wild Vine, seek to take the Krona Navigator from Eon without crossing over the rift. Eon is trapped between the two timelines and is reached by both Arctiguana's Frost Breath and Wild Vine's Vines but he manages to escape and turns back to normal. Team Ben asks Paradox what to do because he's out of alternatives. He proposes that the Bens anchor Eon in each of their different time zones using clockwork. When Team Ben notes that the original Omnitrix did not have clockwork, Paradox informs him that if their Omnitrixes are engaged simultaneously, they may synchronize. When the two Bens give it go, Team Ben manages to change into an 11-year-old clockwork. Eon vanishes when he and 16-year-old Clockwork both shoot him with time beams. Retrieving his arm, Paradox tells him that now that Eon is no longer among us, the various periods of time will soon begin to fit back into place. Paradox recognizes young Ben's aptitude for comprehending time and bemoans the fact that he will eventually have to learn it all over again, but young Ben swiftly surmises that both their memories of the event and the event itself will be wiped immediately. When Ben and Rook, when he comes in the proba truck, have some smoothies outside Mr. Smoothie, time returns to normal. Young Ben and Teen Ben then bid each other farewell. Ben is born and longs for a global catastrophe. Rook concurs. Ben 10,000 enters through a doorway at that precise moment and asks Ben where Paradox is. The Chroma Sapiens have gone rogue, and Maltruant's temporal beasts are on a cross-dimensional rampage. He tells his younger self, lamenting the outgrowth of the Time War. The concept again makes Ben happy, and the episode ends with this.